You can tell by his outfit that he is a contractor. In fact, Mike Holmes is deemed Canada's most trusted contractor on and off TV. He grew up in a modest Toronto home, learned to make tree forts from his Mr. Fix-It dad, and eventually turned himself into a rapid-fire, plain-talking, build-it man who has fans galore. He's a construction rock star who makes it right. Stay with us to meet Canada's most trusted master builder, Inspector Mike Holmes. Good to be here with you today and with consummate skilled contractor Mike Holmes. He's not only trustworthy and talented, one of his fans said he was hunkier than Tom Cruise. His building career spans 30 years. This year he celebrated his 10th television anniversary with a special limited edition magazine and a TV special where Holmes and his team give us an insider look at the man behind the overalls and I see they're not Carhartts. They must be Holmes overalls. Holmes workwear, yes. Well, nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you again. This is a nice, comfortable setting. Isn't it? Yes. New setting. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when you walk into anybody's house or any building, in spite of yourself, do you check corners and beams and windows? I tell you, it's something I can't stop doing. And, and I, I could try. It doesn't matter where I walk. I look. If there's construction happening, I'm scanning everything. As I walk in here, I'm looking for... It's not, it's not that I'm looking for flaws, it's that I'm always looking for something different and then I see the flaws. Mm. Uh, would I say anything? No. You know, I might. I might say that your step is uh, above seven inches, which it shouldn't be. <laughs> you did say. You said I it did. wasn't up to code. Yeah. Well, it's a tripping hazard. Your body's automatically used to lifting your foot to a certain height. So that's why we have that code when it comes to stairs mm -hmm. or uh, steps in any which way. And uh, if it's a little higher, you will trip on it. If you trip on it, it's a glass table, you smack your head, and, and the next thing you know, you're in the hospital. As you saunter down the street in this city or any other city in Canada, perhaps the United States, uh, people stop you, I know. And the question you are asked most often, or is there one? Ah, uh, there is. Uh, when when can you come to my house? It's actually quite <laughs> surreal around the world. It's like, oh, have I got a show for you? Have mm -hmm. I got a basement you could do? Hey, could you do my backyard? And I think, you know, when you were mentioning, we could come do your roof. Yes, well, your house. no, I have a roofer who lives in the basement, so it's okay. I, the roof's fine. The rest of it, when the ants crawl in and the ants crawl out, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, the Those wing. ones with the wings. Yeah. Yeah, you know you have a nest, yeah. Whenever you see the wings on the ants, the carpenter ants, they don't come in with their saw and their hammer and build away or take your house down. They want to live in the wet wood. You see the wings, they're mm -hmm. living in your house. Uh, wet wood, bad, bad, I'm assuming. Yeah, mm -hmm. not good. I just rot, mold, etc. What else, uh, as far as critters? Well, critters, you, you t I mean, mice alone will do things. One of the worst animals that can be in your house is definitely squirrels. If they're up in the attic, they chew wires like you've never... They, mm -hmm. they think they're electricians, and, and by the time they've done their work, uh, not only do you have to re-insulate your attic, you'll have to rewire most of the house because they will just chew everything. Well, uh, we had an otter in our garage. That's u unique, actually. That's not good That's... because we have a, I have a creek that runs under the garage, so uh, Mama Otter thought, what a nice place to have a baby, and they stink. I could imagine. I'm surprised you don't have a beaver. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, it couldn't get worse. Anyway, over to you. Little guy, building tree forts with dad. What did he teach you about uh, he, constructing he, things? To me, he was Superman. I mean, he did. He was a licensed uh, plumber at the time, but he did electrical, and maybe he shouldn't have. And I, but I just thought he could do everything. Uh, everyone in the street asked him, everyone in the family, can you come do my house? Can you come do my house? And he, he worked full time at General Motors at the time. And he did this on the side. So he was always a busy guy. Mm -hmm. And when it came to remodeling our house, he just said, you know, Mike, you want to do this? And I was stuck to his knee. I was like, what are you doing? And, and he would always say to me, why am I doing this? So he'd make me think for myself. Uh, when I was six, I rewired the whole second floor. And then, you know, by the time I was 12, I finished my uncle's basement, electrical, plumbing, bar, stairs, complete basement. And then he just told everyone, hire my son, hire my son. He was too busy. Really? Yeah. So when you say you rewired at six, yeah. I'm impressed. I can't put a tinker toy together, so I'm really impressed. Uh, with Dad's help. 
Of course, with his help, yes, because it was, you know, I wanted to do it, he let me do it, and he started teaching me what to do, and uh, whether or not he actually taught me correctly, what, you know, that's, mm -hmm. did he know enough? I thought, again, he was Superman, and, 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 you know, by the time I was 21 running a big company, and I brought him in to show him the $60,000 bathroom I'd done, and uh, he was speechless, and I, I'm walking around, and he goes, this is beautiful, and I said, Dad, you can do this in your sleep, and he goes, actually, no, I can't, Mike, he says, you talk things I don't even understand, you're, you're talking codes mm. that I don't even, I don't even know mm. exist. And I had a big frog in my throat, and I'm thinking, oh man, my dad's proud of me. Yes, and, and uh, you surpassed him in, in a way. I suppose I did. The biggest thing that I, he taught me was be a man of your word. Be on mm. time, you know, don't lie to people, don't take people, because your word will follow you for the rest of your life. And if you do it right, you're gonna do well. If you do it wrong, people won't like you. I doubt there is a person alive who has not hired Mr. Do Wrong. Do everything wrong sometimes. Well, What's this, that about? This is probably because, uh, you know, I, I mean, for the last 30 years, parents, including contractors, have told their kids, don't get in the trades. It's a pain in the, oh. the back. Uh, it's a pain in the wallet. Most people don't want to pay. And they talk about all the negatives. And they convince their kids, why don't you go into IT, the computers, do something else. And, you know, then I was taken out of school. Because when I was a kid, we had carpentry class, sheet metal, welding, mm -hmm. and so I call that temptation classes. You know, touching, you get to play with it, see if you want to do mm -hmm. it. That was pulled out of school, the cutbacks. And this was a huge negative to the industry. And then we got guys, all of a sudden there's booms. You know, anyone can you know, open up with a business card and a hammer and hey, I'm a pro. And they start doing renovations around you know, the whole country and all of a sudden, everything's bad. So if you ask someone, is this going to be you know, a good experience? Most homeowners will tell you, oh, it's gonna to be too long, it's gonna cost me more money, it's gonna be a mess. So the whole thing became a negative and really a bad name. If you were a contractor, I'm telling you, I could tell you stories about things that I've done years ago that they don't give, they don't care about you. You're right. a contractor, you're You were one. going to say it, weren't you? Almost. But we're on TV, you can't say that word. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. But they don't give a right. whoopee. Yes. Yes, I get that. So uh, your litmus test for a contractor today my what? Male story? or female, your litmus oh, test. I'm t well, I, I, I encourage women to get in the trades because I've said it for years, women will make men honest. And we're, we're seeing a massive increase in getting women uh -huh. in trades, which is great. You know, just meeting a female welder that has actually uh, got her eyes set on world skills in Brazil. And she's beat everyone in her class. I think that's so cool. Uh, I, I've, I'm seeing a change, and, I, and I'd like to think that it has a lot to do with my company and what we do in trying to educate people out there, that it's cool to get into the trades. We're now seeing the government uh, jump on this and actually do something mm -hmm. about it, you know, billions of dollars into the infrastructure and $15,000 per student as a write-off each year to create that encouragement sure. to get in. It makes sense, So uh, because there's a shortage, so there's uh, jobs, hello. So schools need to do more. Yes. Do you still take shop in school? Uh, me? Not you. Oh, my son does. I got him. He in. does. Yeah, he's taking it for. I want him to get his carpenter's license. Like, a, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's too late for me, but I want him to do it. I want him to have that credit that makes sense. I brought him with me for uh, Skills Canada here. In I met him, and uh, secret, but it's probably not a secret with you as the dad. He put uh, on his first TV job, I think. Yes. He put a drill through his thumb. Yes, he did, actually. Mm. Yes, he did. And Ow. People keep watching that. And, but you learn from that. This is what you learn from. How many times have I taken a hammer and whacked my finger and taken the nail mm -hmm. right off? You do that until you go, okay, that's going to move. I'm not going to hit it again. Sure. When did the sun start building things? Well, you know, when I was a kid, I thought the same thing. You know, my dad, I was into it, and then he, I, he, he I was probably two, and I bought him his own toolbox with tools and said, don't hit your sisters, you know, because I will punch a hole through you. <laughs> and uh, I guess the world changed because you know, PlayStation and Xbox 360 grabbed more attention to the young than actually building. And I, I just, you know, I didn't want to push him, I didn't want to force him, and it wasn't until he was about 14 at the time that I brought him to the show that I said, uh, okay, you're out of school for the summer. I'll, you know, I'll pay 800 bucks a week. You want to make some money? But you are going to work hard. And by the end of the summer, like he whined, he complained, and, and then he started to like it, and he started like making money. Now he runs jobs, and you know, we have massive crew members uh, for the show. We shoot three and four at a time, nonstop, 12 months of the year, and he's now leading. So, and I'm trying to train him to do that, and I think he's doing very well.
And you have two other kids, right? Two daughters. Sherry also works. Uh, she's I'm, she's better Tyler than I met most professionals. She's just a natural on it. Uh, very unique girl. Amanda, she uh, my older daughter, she just uh, gave me two grandchildren, but she runs the Holmes Foundation on the other side in the company. Mm -hmm. So it's great to have my kids working with me. It's, it's a way of getting to see them. Who taught you to be philanthropic? Ooh, I, that's probably just a natural thing from my dad. Uh, and you know, you know, I don't think you realize these things as you get older, but I had a vision. I said, we've got a problem in this industry, and I knew it at 19. And by the time I was 21 and then 25, and you know, just guys after guys trying to work with me and me trying to reteach them, stop this saying, a blind man would love to see it. It's mind over matter, it's not mine, so it doesn't matter. That was the attitude of building, right? Let's uh -huh. just make money and, and do it all wrong. And to try and change that was important to me, that uh, we need to actually look at this and say, okay, this is a, a wonderful opportunity. Uh, get into Skills Canada, get into world skills, just see that passion in everyone's eyes, and let's, let's do it better, let's teach better. You taught better in New Orleans. I don't know if you were teaching so much as you were rescuing. No, we did. As a matter of fact, when I let Brad use the Make It Right, because I own mm -hmm. that, um, I said, why don't I actually bring my whole crew down? We'll build the first house. I'll make it a, it'll take on a, a Hurricane 5 status level. And I said, I'll bring in all the technology to give you LEED Platinum Status Plus. And we did just that. And we worked with the plumbers, the HVAC guys, the electricians, everyone down there to teach them how to do this. And it, for me, what it was the wonderful opportunity, and I don't think pe you know, too many people know this, I threw that pebble in the pond and I watched the ripple effect. Now there's over 70 houses built down there. There's still LEED Platinum status, which is very green. And we've, we've, I think we helped make change down there. And they're building better. They're building to last rather than building a, a box on blocks. Well, as I recall, last time we talked, uh, you also had um, a beignet or a, one of those fancy donuts uh, with Brad Pitt. Uh, yeah, Brad's, you know. Oh, he's that. A, yeah, he's a nice guy. It was nice to meet him. I didn't really, you know, be, I gotta be honest, I didn't really care. I didn't meet him mm -hmm. until after I did the build. And uh, he wanted to meet me, so we filmed it, and he ended up being a great guy. I met Angelina, she was awesome. Uh, better than I expected, you know, because I think when you go into the world of celebrities, uh, my first impression was, are they going to be spoiled, you know? And, and they weren't. They were actually quite nice people. And they, their, their whole motive, they're very smart. They knew what they were doing to make it right, actually. Mm -hmm. It was like, use your talent, use the status, mm -hmm. use the television, and let's help make a difference. Sure, you've got the clout. Yes. What about the earrings? Well, there's a story behind that. Uh, when my dad your died... Your earrings. Yes, okay. I know. When my dad <laughs> died, uh, I was 30 years old and I just got divorced and it was like my world turned upside down all in a very short period of time and my brother at the time said to me, Mike, why don't you get your ear pierced? And I said, why the hell would I do that? It was my left ear. And he just convinced me to do it, you know, do it for dad. And when he said that, I said, you know, that's actually a, really, a good idea. So I, I pierced my left ear and then I bought a diamond for the left ear and I actually bought a pair because I like to be financially smart and be efficient of and course. I had that second one sitting there. So we're doing New Orleans mm -hmm. and all the guys at the, at the beginning were falling apart. It was so hot and, and then at the end of it they got in tune with it and they wanted to stay. They loved it. So everyone was getting tattoos as memories of being in New Orleans and they were getting, uh, I, I guess, a mental memory of why they were there and they'll never forget it, that experience. So I went in, you know, do I want another tattoo? And at the time I said, no, I don't want another tattoo. And I thought about it and I said, well, I do have another diamond. So I pierced this ear and put the two diamonds in. I forget they're there. I look out my eyes, not at them, mm -hmm. but that's the story. Why. Well, I won't ask you where the tattoo is. <laughs> Definitely near the ear. <laughs> it's okay. Yes, yes. Okay. This is good. But also, you know, earrings uh, sometimes send a message. If like you're what? gay, straight, or sideways. Did you know that? Yeah, well. But depending on the ear, and I'm not sure of the No, girl. it's the right ear. If you wear it, you're supposedly saying you're... On the other windowsill. You're on the other windowsill. I yeah. see. Yeah. But if okay. you have them both, it's like... It's okay. Hey, man, I'm probably the most straightest guy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the most straightest guy I know. <laughs> we'll be back with the straight guy, professional contractor Mike Holmes, who is host of HGTV's Holmes Inspection, and Holmes Makes It Right, and he is a philanthropist, too.